And if we go into dorsiflexion, what we should start to see right off the bat as we move into dorsiflexion is you'll see the midfoot, which is this area of the foot right here, will rotate a little bit. <clears throat> okay? And so the midfoot actually drops closer to the floor. Okay? That is a normal thing. So when we're observing ankle dorsiflexion, that's not any sort of compensation. That is a necessary uh, motion of the foot that allows for the navicular, which is the medial side of the midfoot, it allows for the navicular to rotate a little bit more towards the floor, which clears some space for the talus to move and the shin to move over top of the talus, okay? So what you'll often find in people that have limited dorsiflexion is they don't have a lot of midfoot motion whereby the midfoot will start to rotate down to the floor. And as a result, the talus cannot get out of the way, right? Therefore, as the shank, the tibia and the fibula roll over the dome of the talus, because the top of the talus is, it looks like a dome, as they roll over the dome of the talus, the, the shin bones bang into the navicular, okay? And oftentimes what we get is we get a closing angle ankle pinch, okay? <clears throat> that closing angle ankle pinch is a result of a rotational deficiency of the midfoot. We have to reestablish some rotation of the midfoot that allows for that navicular to get out of the way so the tibia can roll over the dome of the talus. Okay? The second thing that we might observe is we might observe that as we go into dorsiflexion, the weight will actually shift onto the inside part of the calcaneus, okay? Which again is 100% normal. The reason why the weight shifts onto the inside part of the calcaneus is because we need rotational motion at the subtalar joint. And so the subtalar joint is the joint that's actually formed by the talus and the calcaneus. Okay, you guys have referred to the subtalar joint before? So the subtalar joint is technically when, when someone says, uh, I'm overpronating, they're often referring to the fact that the calcaneus moves into a valgus position, and therefore the subtalar joint overpronates. Okay? The subtalar joint has to pronate, which means that there is a little bit of a valgus motion of the calcaneus in normal ankle function, okay? <clears throat> Technically, what that means is that the, the subtalar joint is moving into a little bit of what we call eversion, okay? Eversion is also a rotational motion of the foot, which allows the weight to move more to the inside part of the foot as the ankle is dorsiflexing, because we want that weight to get to the inside part of the foot, because if he was weight-bearing and walking, that's exactly where we want that weight distribution to go to the inside part of the foot so it can go through the first ray, which we're gonna look at next. And that first ray can dorsiflex and create some sort of uh, appropriate toe off for us to move forward. Yeah, it's a tricky one because it's technically not just the ankle that allows for ankle motion. It's the ankle, or what we call strictly the ankle, which is the talus between the tibia and fibula. And then we have the subtalar joint and then we have the midfoot, and the midfoot and the subtalar joint are part of what I'll call the global ankle complex that allows for a proper and appropriate dorsiflexion to occur.